First at Five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. Welcome to WUFT News First at Five. I'm Samantha Sherry. And I'm Kendall Brandt. Thanks for joining us. Each year, Operation Greenlight helps Floridians save on fees from their overdue traffic tickets or court fines. Participants have the potential to save between 25% to 40% of their collection agency surcharges. WUFT's Sophia Mingotti gives us the numbers of Alachua County's Greenlight program. Red, yellow, green. Green means go except for those with overdue traffic tickets or court fines. Anna O'Brien got pulled over in early March. O'Brien had an expired registration and received a traffic ticket. It was 109, but I was kind of late, so it was, turned out to be 129. O'Brien went into the Alachua County Family and Civil Justice Center to pay the traffic ticket. And so when this hit, I was kind of like, mm, what do I do? So I had to prepare myself so I had enough money to cover this and still be able to have money left over for everything else. I have to be responsible for paying. The Alachua County Clerk of the Court hosts Operation Greenlight annually to give residents an opportunity to pay their overdue tickets and fines without the collection agency surcharge. Clerk of the Court and Comptroller of Alachua County, Jess Irby, says as of noon Friday, participants saved over $13,000 in collection agency fees. 105 individuals that had come in, they can take care of 157 cases uh, that they'd had, so some had some multiple cases they were able to take care of. They ended up paying a total of $26,500 in those initial obligations. And with that, though, they were able to save on the collection agency fees over $13,000. And so it's pretty significant when you look at those percentages. The program allows participants to save some money and get back on the road. Once you lose that license, it can really set off a vicious cycle. It's hard to get uh, to work, it's hard to enjoy your life, or you end up picking up additional charges, additional tickets, and then next thing you know, you owe more money. These fees mount up, but Operation Greenlight helps Alachua County residents get back into gear. Sophia Mingoti, WUFT News. The latest numbers are almost 28,000 in initial obligations paid with almost 15,000 in collection agencies fees waived. Operation Greenlight ended on Friday, but Alachua County residents can expect the program to come around again in early April 2023. Port St. Lucie police are searching for a missing 15-year-old girl. Police responded early this morning. Sage Stiles was talking to a friend while walking to school and said someone was following her. The friend called 911. Officers found Stiles' backpack and cell phone on a sidewalk leading to her own neighborhood. A camera system there caught Stiles walking behind houses about a half hour after the 911 call. Police say in that video clip she did not appear to be in danger or distress, but they're still calling in a prison bloodhound to help with the search. A Gainesville retirement community is using solar energy to help lower power bills. WUFT's Joseph Jackamzuck shows us how it works. The existence of solar panels is hard to ignore at Okamak Retirement Community. The idea of implementing solar came when Okamak grew concerned of high power bills received from GRU. The community was paying a lot for power, and Chief Financial Officer Andrew Davey says this problem persists. We spend eight, nine hundred thousand dollars a year on just power. I mean, it's a pretty good-sized bill when you think about all the square footage here. Oak Hammock needed to consider damage limitations and began brainstorming ideas to save power. After many discussions, Oak Hammock resident Bill Rossi says the residents themselves had the solar solution. In this case, this was a resident-driven project, a resident-produced project, and then uh, joined up with the management team, presented everything that we had done, so all the work was done. The first solar panel was constructed on the property in December of last year. And the presence of solar panels here at Oak Hammock have increased dramatically since it was just a single entity on top of a building. Now, today, over 682 solar panels have been built on Oak Hammock's property, with that number continuing to rise. It cost $603,000 to build them all, but the payback has been worth it. The introduction of solar puts Oak Hammock on track to save nearly $50,000 a year on power. The panels are also bifacial, meaning they have a lifespan of around 25 to 30 years. To Rossi's surprise, Okamek is also the first retirement community in Florida to implement solar as renewable energy. I mean, here we are in the Sun Belt, Florida, Texas, California. <laughs> I mean, we're 
in the Sun Belt, and we were the first and are still the only continuing care retirement facility that's done this. Okamic are continuing to develop new ways to implement renewable energy on their property. A long-term goal for the community would be to one day solely run on renewable sources. Joseph Jackamzook, WUFT News. For their solar efforts, Oak Hammock was recently given a star award by Gainesville Mayor Lauren Poe. Consumers are feeling a little less pressure at the pump these days. The average cost of gas fell more than a dime in the past two weeks, and nationally the price of regular is $4.11 per gallon. One reason for the drop could be that higher prices reduced demand during the second half of March. Experts say there may be some short-term improvement, but long-term, they expect the global oil supply to remain tight. Samantha, we've had beautiful weather today. I wonder how long this weather will last. WUFT's Julia Haley joins us now with the weather forecast. Starting off our Monday, we've had some warm, almost summer-like temperatures here in North Central Florida. 80 for Cross City, 81 Gainesville, 81 Stark, 82 Ocala, 80 the Villages, and 77 for Daytona. Overall, looks like a pretty warm day for our Monday. And outside of our studio, currently seeing those clear blue skies that we saw yesterday as well. A beautiful day outside, feels like 80 degrees with those southeasterly winds overall. And for our hour by hour, starting in the 80s this evening and ending in the upper 50s by the morning as well. Clear skies overall. Back to you. Thanks for the update, Julia. People in Gainesville could see some more sustainable changes coming their way. The city introduced a new subcommittee focusing on environmental and climate justice. The Environmental Justice Subcommittee held its first meeting Tuesday. Commissioner David Ariola says the subcommittee was needed to take action on a local scale. The group's first goals include preserving black neighborhoods and using more electric vehicles for the city fleet. Other goals include expanding pedestrian and bicycle accessibility, increasing education on conservation, and incentivizing renewable energy practices for companies. Gun deaths are on the rise around the country. Coming up on WUFT News First at 5, what steps will Biden take to prevent gun violence? You're watching WUFT-TV News. Welcome back. President Biden says the U.S. and its allies are working closely together to manage the destabilizing effects of Russia's war against Ukraine. He made the comment during a virtual meeting with India's prime minister. India's prime minister condemned the killing of innocent civilians in Ukraine. President Biden said the U.S. and India have the same concerns about global challenges such as COVID, climate change, and mutual defense. President Biden is unveiling new steps to reduce gun violence. As NBC's Alice Barr explains, one focuses on so-called ghost guns. At least two people killed, 10 injured at an Iowa nightclub. At a party in suburban Chicago, at least one killed, several injured. And near a New York high school, three teenagers shot, one fatally. That's just part of the toll of one weekend's gun violence in America. President Biden today rolling out new steps to curb a pandemic era surge in fatal shootings. The president zeroing in on ghost guns, kits that can be assembled at home with no serial numbers to trace and no background check required. Police in several major cities increasingly finding them at crime scenes. These guns are weapons of choice for many criminals. We're going to do everything we can to deprive them of that choice. The Philadelphia District Attorney's Office today announcing charges against one man accused of making ghost gun parts with a 3D printer. This is a terrible threat to public safety, not just this one person, but the reality that this can be replicated. With deep-seated divisions blocking gun control legislation in Congress, President Biden is relying on more executive action, now classifying ghost gun kits as firearms, meaning they will require licensing, serial numbers, and background checks. All of a sudden, it's no longer a ghost. It has a return address. It's going to help save lives. 
The president also announcing a long-awaited nominee, Steve Dettelbach, to head the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, looking to strengthen the federal agency that enforces gun laws and give them new tools to get illegal weapons off the streets. A system is traveling throughout the Gulf and is heading east. Will it reach Florida and will it bring rain? We'll have the full breakdown in a few minutes. You're watching WUFT TV News. Welcome back. A scientific study of horseshoe crabs in Florida lets ordinary people join in. WUFT's Nadia Cox takes us through the surveying work in Levy County. It's high tide in Cedar Key. For biological research agent Savannah Berry, this means it's time to work. The short version of my job is to bring science out into the real world and help communities apply science and participate in science. Berry leads the Florida Horseshoe Crab Watch, a study monitoring the horseshoe crab population. The study started in Cedar Key in 2015 and grew to coastal counties all across the state. Horseshoe crabs can be found everywhere across Florida's coast, including this beach in Cedar Key. I'm here observing the surveying process. Barry says the study relies on volunteers to gather data. We would have far less data than we're able to gather by working with Florida citizens. Volunteers help weigh, measure, and tag the crabs before releasing them back into the water. Crabs are most likely to be spotted between March and April, their peak mating season. All ages can participate in the survey. Crab Watch volunteer Eliza Barry says she was surprised by how easy the process was to complete. I asked her if it was going to be like something that I should pack the stroller, pack all the accessories, and she was like, nope, it's pretty easy, you know, anyone can do it. Keeping an eye on the population doesn't just help the crabs or the environment. Horseshoe crab blood is used to test vaccines and pharmaceutical drugs for bacteria. Although they provide benefits to humans, Barry says not much is known about the crabs. We actually don't have a very good idea of if their populations are stable, declining, or increasing. For now, each crab found brings Barry and her volunteers closer to discovering the answers. Nadia Cox, WUFT News. If you see a horseshoe crab in the wild, you can report it online at fwc.com slash horseshoe crabs. Now, let's revisit Julia Haley to see if the weather will hold up for some beach trips. Today was a beautiful day to go to the beach, even hang outside. Clear blue skies outside, currently 82 degrees outside of our studio with those southeasterly winds just giving us a little bit of a breeze for today. Those temperatures all around north central Florida sitting in the 80s, 81 Gainesville, 82 for Ocala, 80 the villages, and a little bit cooler on the east coast, 75 Daytona, 76 for St. Augustine. And for our hour by hour, starting in the 80s, but dry Dropping into the upper 50s by mid morning around 3 a.m. Clear skies overall. For Tuesday, expecting those temperatures to stay high once again. A perfect day to go to the beach or even just hang outside, maybe have a picnic. Currently, 84 in Gainesville is what we'll be seeing for tomorrow. Alachua County sitting in the mid to lower 80s. And for Marion County, is seeing a little bit warmer temperatures. 86 for the villages and 86 for the Ocala National Forest as well. But Wednesday through Friday, expect some showers that are going to be starting up as this cold front makes its way throughout the panhandle and turns into a stationary front, meaning that we will be getting a little bit more rain and some showers as well. Tallahassee and Gainesville Friday around midnight, seeing that rain start to be very present in their area, but the stationary front is going to clear up around Friday morning, but we'll see another round of showers by Friday afternoon into the evening as well as this front makes its way through our area, all of Florida seeing all of these showers. Now for our pollen forecast, seeing that pollen, specifically our grass and our tree pollen, stay pretty high throughout Monday and Tuesday as well. But as that front brings all of that rain to our area, we should be seeing that ragweed pollen as well, meaning you may want to take your allergy medicine because this may be a 
an allergic time for you. Now for Tuesday, of course, we'll be seeing those clear, sunny skies. Perfect day to go outside, maybe go to the beach. But by Thursday, that rain will start up as that front makes its way through. Those temperatures staying in the mid 80s throughout the week. So that cold front not giving much of an effect and into that stationary front as well. By Sunday, by your Easter, we should be seeing those skies start to clear up a little bit more. Still seeing those clouds, but overall highs in the 80s and lows in the mid 60s. Back to you. Thanks, Julia. The Gator basketball season is long in the rearview mirror, but fans received some good news today. That is right. One Gators men basketball player says he's returning next year. Stay tuned after the break when we find out who is returning and more with local sports news. You're watching WUFT TV News. Welcome back to sports. I'm Jensen Young. Gator men's basketball fans have a long wait before next season, but there is some early news. Colin Castleton, the Gators leading scorer last season, announced on Twitter this morning that he will return for next season. Castleton told FloridaGators.com that new head coach Todd Golden is a big reason. He said he loves Golden's vision for the team. Florida also received its first transfer commitment for next season. Belmont's Will Richard, a guard, is transferring to play for the Gators in the 2022-23 season. At Belmont, the 6'5", Richard averaged 12.1 points and 6 rebounds per game last season as a freshman. The Gators softball team has lost their second SEC series after dropping two games to Alabama over the weekend. Florida entered the weekend ranked number 8 in the nation, but lost 8-3 on sun Saturday and 2-1 on, sat on Sunday. Now on a three-game losing streak, the Gators dropped to number 10. The Gators will have a chance to grab a win against the Crimson Tide in the third game of the series tonight in Gainesville. After a series victory over number 2 Arkansas, the Gator baseball team finds themselves back in the top 25, now at number 23. The Gators started slow on Thursday, losing 8-1. The offense did pick up speed on Friday and Saturday as the Gators won both games by a combined 16-9. Wyatt Lankford and BT Ryopel hit home runs on Friday and Saturday, combining for 10 RBI. Gator head coach Kevin O'Sullivan highlighted his team's resiliency after Saturday's win. A couple weeks ago, you know, we may not have hung in there, even though we hurt ourselves today. Um, you know, we had some big at-bats. Derek's at-bat at the end was huge. Um, and uh, obviously to tack on one more, gave us a little bit of cushion. Um, and then Blake Purnell, what can you say about him? He was outstanding the entire weekend. The Gears take on the Florida State Seminoles tomorrow. The Knowles just dropped out of the rankings after losing two of three against Georgia Tech. After a scrimmage on Saturday, Billy Napier and the Gator football team are looking forward to Thursday's orange and blue game. After many weeks of spring practice, Gator fans will be able to see their new team and staff in person as the game will be held in the swamp. Napier says consistency has been a big point of emphasis for the team all spring. There's no doubt. I mean, I think the film this week has been much cleaner. You know, um, you know, I tell the staff all the time, I should be able to look at the script, okay, and look at the offensive play, look at the defensive call, and tell you what's going to happen. It will take place on Thursday at 7.30. The MLB season is officially underway, and the Tampa Bay Rays are off to a hot start. The Rays started their season at home with a three-game series against the Baltimore Orioles. They swept the series with a combined score of 15-4. Second-year infielder Wander Franco led the team with six hits and three RBI over 11 at-bats. Surprisingly, Tampa Bay is the only undefeated team in the league. The Rays will host the Oakland A's for a four-game series starting tonight. A quick-acting 10-year-old alerted his family to a house fire. According to Lafayette County Fire Department, the 10-year-old remained calm and cool and collected and did exactly what he should have done. Bailey saw the smoke early Tuesday morning. He remembered what firefighters who came to his school told him to do. As soon as he saw the smoke, he alerted his grandparents who were visiting to get out. That was definitely a hero right there. Mm -hmm. Before we go, one last check on the weather. 
Monday evening, starting off our evening with those clear skies, some clouds rolling in, but overall seeing those lows in the mid 50s. And for our six day outlook, Tuesday, perfect day to go outside, maybe go to the beach or have a picnic it's in the mid 80s, but with those sunny skies, Wednesday and even Thursday, starting to see those clouds build and that rain start to appear as well, meaning that you may want to stay inside during those days and bring an umbrella. By Sunday, expect those sunny weather to come back with those highs in the 80s and lows in the 60s. Back to you. Thanks, Julia. BBC World News is next and the PBS News Hour is coming up at 7. But your Florida news is always on at WUFT.org. Have a good night.